Uh, anyone you know? I'm guessing yet, so I'm not sure you yourself. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be stretched a little bit from, this, yeah. uh, from the projector. But anyway, uh, thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, tonight's presentation is by Tara Barrett. Tara's uh, from St. John's. She's been up here staying now, uh, what did you tell me, 10 weeks and working at Dem Days in Goose Bay. Uh, she's a, uh, doing her master's in folklore, and it's, uh, it's a different project, a different type of program where you don't write a thesis, you do two internships sort of thing. So one of hers is with them days. And her project is, I guess, identifying uh, people with old, old photographs. So um, without further ado, here's Tara. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you guys for coming and thank you for the introduction. You kind of uh, stole the first part of my introduction where I said that I was from St. John's and I'm can you guys hear me? Could yeah. you, yeah, could you speak up, please, because this guy's deaf. Yeah, sure, I can try and speak up. I am a quiet speaker, but I'll try and speak a little bit louder. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, we can move over closer. Yeah, if, you want to, if, you, if you want to move on the other side of the... Um, you can move on the other side of the stage. Yeah. You want to do it from the other way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So as Scott said, I, uh, I am here from St. John's and I'm working with them days and uh, I'm basically here for 16 weeks and uh, I've been here for 10, so I've got another six weeks to go. Um, and as he said, I'm here in a work term. So this is, with the folklore program, I could do a thesis or I could do a work term. So I chose to do a work term, which means that I go out and do like some sort of community project and I write a little report about that and I don't have to write the big, uh, you know, hundred some odd page uh, thesis, which I enjoy. Um, and I'm happy to be here because it's actually my first time in lab uh, So I'm really enjoying my time here so far. Um, I was going to talk about them days. Um, I was going to get a little bit of a background information. I still can. I'm just saying that you guys probably know that we have a, a North History Magazine and an archive. Um, we're located in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, you know, we've been around for 40 years now, uh, since 1975, and um, I guess 41 this year. Um, and basically, Them Days is dedicated to collecting, promoting, and preserving um, the stories of Labrador. And, uh, Them Days hosts a number of events like uh, the Cultural Days over uh, the uh, Culture Days over here. Um, fundraising events. This was a couple of weeks back here in Northwest River, which was a lot of fun. We also do workshops. This was actually a workshop that Amy and I attended, um, but they also we also host workshops. Um, so I guess the project itself. Um, so basically, as I said, I've been hired with uh, Them Days as a project researcher. Uh, for it's a long title, but it's the Outdoor <coughs> Image Identification and Dissemination Initiative which is a mouthful, so we decided to chop it down to just ID them days. Um, and so this project is uh, funded in part by Libraries and Archives Canada. So basically what I do with the project is just meet with people um, to help name and date photographs and find out location of those pictures that we don't know of where they were taken. Uh, we have 12,000 plus photos that we're trying to not all of them are unidentified, but we're trying to, you know, research and sort and identify as much as the ones that we don't have any information about. Um, so these photos, we have a digitized slide collection as well as um, a negative collection. Um, and we also have a print and photograph uh, collection. So um, then they used to have a, um, a, a dark room in the back, so we used to print our own photographs. We have a large collection which are either unidentified or have no information. So they may actually be in our system already, but we don't know because uh, a lot of them are just in boxes and in the back. So I'm trying to sort through that right now. Um, so our archive is actually broken down by section. So for our photographs, um, we have them broken down geographically, and they're given just a letter and then a number. So the letter just means where it is. Um, so, for example, Northwest River, 
is in the K section. So that's the, the it just indicates the geographic position of the place in Labrador. Um, and uh, happy values bay is in the M section. So this is what it looks like from our archives. So this is our digitized negatives and how they're stored. And then this is the long list of miscellaneous negatives that we have. A lot of these are duplicates, um, but there's over uh, 7,000 in there that we have. So some of them do have some information about them, but a lot of them have little or no information. Um, so this is what our database actually looks like. So that's where we enter in all of our information, basically. And this is the same thing for our slide collection. It's very similar. Slides are kept, and then we have the actual slides on our computer system so we can find them, and then that's the database to search for them. This is what our print photograph collection looks like, unsorted in boxes. So this is what we're, part of what we're trying to do with this project is to sort through all of these and try and name them. Um, the first event that we had was a Tea with Tara event, so people came out to our uh, office and they went through this box here and they named not all of the people in the photographs, but they partially named uh, 100, over 100 photographs, so that was, that was great. It was a great start, I have to say. And um, what else was a great start? Uh, th those are where you file the photos you've identified? Here? Yeah. Uh, those are just miscellaneous boxes? Just like that one? Yeah. Uh, now, some of these, uh, these are put in um, by donation. So up here, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it mm -hmm. says Dr. Patton. So he donated a section of photographs. So those are in in order that he gave us or whatever, but they're not actually. Are, are they are they though just photos or do you put them in plastic sleeves? Though so they're in plastic sleeves because okay. they're in the back or in the archive. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, what I was going to originally say about the uh, miscellaneous section here is that the reason that we do have a miscellaneous section is for photographs that uh, relate to Labrador but weren't necessarily taken in Labrador. So photographs from German missionaries back in Germany or photographs, uh, you know, maybe taken in St. Anthony, having to do with Grenfell or something like that. So there was there was a reason why we had the miscellaneous section, but at some point, it seems like everything kind of just got thrown to the thrown into that one section and uh, got a little jumbled up. Uh, we also just have a <laughs> briefcase of negatives. This is basically a lot of our collection is. Uh, digitized negatives. So, as you probably know, when you used to take, you know, your film out, you used to have your negatives. And so, this is just a brief case of negatives that aren't digitized, which means that we we can't look through them quickly, and uh, we also don't know who's in them or mm -hmm. what what they are of without you know holding them up to the light. So, these have to be uh, digitized and uh, and then find out who's who and what's what. Anyway, so that's another big part of the project. Uh, so basically, the main part, I guess, of what I'm doing right now is just trying to clear out our miscellaneous section because it is such a such a big part of it. Um, as I said, a lot of them are duplicates, so a lot of them can be taken care of. Um, so a couple of weeks back, Amy and I downloaded this software that matched up all the photographs so it went through and took things from the miscellaneous section and just double-checked if they were in other sections. So basically what I'm going through right now is just taking those out, um, which sounds like it could go really quickly, but it doesn't because you have to uh, double-check whether or not they're actually the same photograph, and then you have to go to our, our old card files, which is how everything, we still have our filing system, so we have to go back to the filing system, take this one out, delete our digital copies. So it's a, it's a bit more uh, intensive than uh, it should be. It should be just you know a couple of deletes, and it should be done. Um, the other main thing that I'm doing is once I meet with people, I also update the database with the information that they give us. So it has to be updated on our online database, and then also in our our old time index card filing system. So the main thing. Oh, the other thing I guess is uh, our print photo database, once those are identified, we have to actually enter all that information into an online 
database, which we don't have done yet. So that's another project that uh, is up on the horizon. So a large part of this project is basically just meeting with people, um, consulting community members and identifying as many people in the photographs as possible. Uh, it's usually done in, in group meetings. Um, either we have people come to the office or uh, we go to so like a, a meeting out in the community. We also do one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, either in, in somebody's home or they can come to the office. Um, so I've met a couple people so far. Um, I attended a new Nazi with uh, Elder Social and a tea at the uh, Labrador Friendship Center. Um, so these were also really good at just meeting people and getting phone numbers and um, I guess hometown so that we can call them and say, you know, we're doing, well tomorrow actually we're doing a, a Hebron event, so we're having a couple people who live in Happy Valley Goose Bay come into the office and look at some pictures from Hebron and hopefully identify some people so we can call people up and, you know, have them come to us and look at as many pictures as we can and hopefully identify lots more. Um, so, so far with uh, our community meetings and through social media, we've identified over 385 photographs, which is good so far. Pretty happy about that. Um, so, I guess the other part of what we're doing is we're using social media to try and connect with people because it seems like a lot of people are, especially on Facebook, um, sharing and interacting with the photographs. Um, what we're trying to do is we use I don't know if anybody here knows what a hashtag is, but we use hashtags, um, which basically means that this will come up with a link on it. So you can click on this if this was posted on Facebook or Twitter or something, and it'll bring you to all the past photos that we've posted with this with this hashtag. So what we're trying to do is just uh, post a couple every week. So we post a, a Military Monday or a Mystery Monday photo, and then a Where Is It Wednesday, which is just a photograph which we're not sure where it is. Um, this one's actually from Maine and it was identified on our Twitter and our Facebook. And then a flashback Friday which is a more recent photograph. And this one, this one got a lot of response and we have almost everyone identified. Like a couple of people that you can't see aren't identified but for the most part everyone in this one was identified which was great. Uh, and then we also share them on uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook groups that are, have similar interests. So um, like the Friends of Cartwright or Goose Bay History or um, Stroll Down Memory Lane. Basically other groups that are interested in old photographs or uh, history of, of Labrador. Um, it's been really good to track how much social media interest we've had. Uh, we have an increase of 28% more likes on Facebook since we started. and. Uh, this is going to sound crazy, but a 560% increase in uh, interactions. So from the week before we started to the week, just last week, we had that much more interest and interaction on our social media. Um, the other part that uh, I'm trying to do with this is travel. So because Them Days is a, you know, it's all over Labrador, um, it's a regional magazine, so there's pictures from all over, um, not just, you know, Happy Valley Goose Bay where Them Days is based. So in March and April, I'm traveling to a number of places. Uh, next Thursday, I'm going to Maine for a couple of nights. And uh, that Sunday, I'm going to Natwashish. Um, and when I go to Natwashish, I'm going uh, out on the land with uh, the elders where they'll be uh, having a, a meeting. So hopefully to get as many uh, pictures identified there as possible. And uh, when, when I go out with photographs, we make sure not to bring the Originals. We'll bring photocopies, or we'll bring a, a projector and a you know a portable screen to show all the pictures on. Um, well, I guess a couple of other places that we're going to try and get to is Cartwright within March and April, uh, Northwest River, Cheshire, and hopefully maybe Mudlake. So it's going to be a busy couple of a uh, busy couple of six weeks. You know, but it'll be lots of fun. Um, so basically, as you may have gathered, the project is a little bit bigger than uh, a 16 week uh, internship. And the more that we dig, the more we find. Um, so once, you know, once all the photos and negatives have been identified, we need to enter the information into a database. Um, a finding needs to be uh, made just so that the material can be accessible and used for public, researchers, and staff. 
Um, so the final goals are basically the identification of as many of the 12,000 plus photographs which have little or no information about them, uh, the digitization of the print photographs that were done out in the, the dark room um, so that they can be seen and used, um, reinstatement of our online finding aid. So if you, uh, you know, if you, if you couldn't make it into Happy Valley Goose Bay, you could search through online and see what we had in our archives, whether or not we had anything that was useful, and then you could, you know, contact us either to get information online, or you could, you know, realize that it was, you know, important enough, and you could make your make your way to the to the office. Um, so there's a company out in BC that's putting that back up online. Um, basically, the other thing is. We have a lot of material which has been donated recently, and we need to make sure that material is stored properly in the archives. So like you mentioned, you asked about whether or not they're stored you know, properly in, in, a, in a sleeve. So we have to make sure that all our photographs and our negatives and all of our material is stored properly. So that is another big part. Um, and then the other thing is just, as everyone says, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. So actually, just, just earlier when you are looking at that first picture, and you're talking about the gardens were here and, and just different stories. You can see that one picture can have a lot of different memories and a lot of different stories associated with it. So um, magazine content and oral histories that come up with the, uh, with the pictures. Um, so we we're hoping to you know, extend this project. So we've applied for some funding, so hopefully it, it'll, it'll all get done in due time. Um, it'll just make it easier for anybody who you know, is maybe researching their genealogy, um, academic researchers or medical researchers, so they can find the material that they need. Um, it'll also just make uh, researching for the magazine and publishing the magazine quicker. Um, it's, it'll also just be good for a general public who, you know, if you, if there's a picture of a, a, you know, somebody's grandfather or grandmother in our print collection, we would have no idea that we had it because right now it's sitting in boxes. It's, we don't know what's in there. We don't know who's who. So it'll, it'll make everything a lot easier all the way around. Um, so basically the final outcome of the project is, is hopefully just to get an increased uh, use of the archives, um, hopefully get online access easier to, the, to our holdings, and just increase the interest in the magazine and the organization itself. So if you would like to contact us, that is our phone number, 896. Uh, 8531. You can follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Um, you can send us an email or you can drop by the office. And now I'm just going to show you guys some photographs, which I'm sure is the main part why the room came. This is, our, this is the one that was on our poster. And you were talking about, was it over here there was gardens? I was just saying, you were mentioned earlier there's uh, gardens. Were they over here, you were saying? Well, they were there, they were over there. They're right here where we are right now. Right? <laughs> This is the poster, the picture that was used for this uh, poster, and it was, uh, was put in a Them Days magazine a couple of years back, but uh, it was in the who, what, where section, trying to identify it, and this was one which Amy suggested we use for the poster because it hasn't really been fully identified. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who was that? Alvin Blake on the right. This one? Yeah. yeah. Alvin Blake, okay. Make sure to write that down. When did these pictures been taken? They range. Yeah. Uh, they could have been taken. We have as the 1800s and some more recent, like the 1950s, 1960s. A lot from the 70s as well, from when them days started and went out and got lots of pictures, photographs taken. Oh, yeah. 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 Looks to be thin. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, the red house is around. It looks like a city. Yeah, but this is. What would it take to come around the right? I don't know. Oh, like Dora Ford. So I'm not, I'm not sure these ones were in our in our Northwest River section, but it is possible that they were somebody who perhaps lived here at some point and were oh, she living away. Because mm -hmm. like you said, the, the brick house doesn't, doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it would be uh, yeah. Yeah. on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It may just be people who were traveling somewhere and had a photograph taken somewhere yeah. else and then brought home with them. Oh, there's the girl guys, yeah, that picture. Tino Halpin. Tino Halpin. You know, they were, um, is this a group still? Tino Halpin. The Fortis. It's like a Montague right down there. Yeah, the Fortis. Millie. 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 She didn't have their names on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll marry to my car. Maybe Blake will be in there somewhere. Eh? Maybe Blake should be there somewhere. Janet Michelin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The left, or the left. Second, Second row. row. Yeah. Second row on the left. It looks like Janet Michelin. We really don't know. She was Janet Becky, I guess, in that time. But it may not be. One disorder out of three might be a good one. No, higher up there. Yes, uh, looks a bit like her. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that you know about just means that it's from that from college. Street. Street. Yeah. You know, she's a teacher. She had the girl guides. So. <laughs> oh, okay. She I'm not sure. very active in the community. I think they're out of town, is that <laughs> The guy on the left certainly doesn't look like he's from. <laughs> I don't think he's ever. So she's the lady that the school was named after in Shenji? Yeah. Yeah. The father was supposed to be an English man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mackenzie. Oh, yes. I think. Oh. Oh. Is that one on the left on the Shenzhen side of the river? I think the age that it, of that picture, there wouldn't be houses. And there wouldn't have fences. Yeah, I just wonder the big gravel pit behind it, eh? Yeah, it looks like. Well, so this is not Snowflake River. I don't know, that's why. It's actually in the background. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. So 
Have you shared any of the um, ones of the Inu folks on the the Inu uh, photograph site on Facebook? No. What's the name of that group? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I can find out for you. Yeah. Um, the it's the photos that get put up there get the people that get identified within minutes. It takes very little time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it uh, that would probably I'm sure that most of the people will be identified. I'll, I'll email you that. I just can't remember exactly what's yeah. on top. I think that's about all of our pictures. Does anybody have any, any questions, any any comments, anything? Are you intending to come to Northwest still uh, before you leave? Yeah. Yeah. Not the not next week because uh, next week I'm gonna be at the Winter Games and then I'm gonna be in Maine and uh, Narashish, but uh, after that, yeah. So when I come back to Northwest River, um, Scott mentioned uh, the seniors group or the 50 plus club. Is there anything, anybody, and you mentioned maybe the Institute. Was there, was there anything else? Any other suggestions for coming back here? Sounds good. <laughs> Who would she uh, contact about the 50 plus clubs? Anybody know to come in one day when they're meeting? Edith. Edith? Okay. 497 Mm-hmm. 